Hey guys, Zell here. Welcome back to my fate to Grand Order. We are in Sector 11 and we have six more to go. Then we are finally done with the last part three and I can worry about the event, which is tomorrow night. So technically two days left. The Poppy Girl. There's red hair. We are fighting Viders, so obviously I'm just going to be bringing the same team I brought before. Which would be... Plus one to Kiara. Only because we're not fighting red hair, so... It shouldn't really be a serpent we're fighting, at least right now. I'd hope not. Section 11, the poppy girl. Then it is your belief that the other Caldeans will next show themselves at the prison. They will do this, you believe, even though their most crucial asset, the Shadow Border, is already on its way to Zhang Yang. I do. Difficult as it may be to believe, they are quite thoroughly shackled by their absurd morality. If forced to choose between people and assets, they will always ignore the big picture in favor of life, even if it creates more danger for them. They are the very incarnation of foolishness. Well, if you feel you are cer that certain, we will not attempt to dissuade you. We do not know what trick they have employed to elude our sight. But we have received reports of figures matching their description fighting near Hong Kong. Very well, we will permit you to remain at that facility. You may even command the guard should the need arise. However, Kuaiji Zero will not go with you. We are assigning him to guard Zhang Yang as the Shadow Border is our top priority. I understand. Ah, yes, we agreed to call him Zhang Yu. Around you, didn't we? Surely you jest. Your imperial majesty, Lord Zhang Yu, is, has no concern for what he is called whatsoever. If your prediction turns out to be correct, this will be a prime opportunity to restore your honor. See that you reclaim your revenge. I will, your imperial majesty. You won't. It's just nine cards for you. You seem displeased, Saber. I don't like having Skoy and Sky and the Caldeans being kept prisoner in the same facility. True, in our world, keeping the enemy prisoners separate is only sensible in warfare. For one thing, you don't want to risk them working together and escaping. But Keishi Wang is more concerned about keeping all the Empire's enemies in one place and the threat of them banding together. If you think of your enemies as carriers of a disease, it makes sense to keep them isolated in a single location. Especially since that way the Emperor can wipe them all out at once if necessary. Then if the prisoners decide to revolt, does that mean the Emperor will drop another star? I wouldn't be surprised. If it came to cases, the Emperor would not hesitate. The Emperor frightens me. There is something terrifying about the way the Emperor views their subjects. And the men of Kishi Wang's rule now that they are immortal. Master, can I ask you what you think about this last built China? About the state of this eternal empire? Who cares about human society? They can all wipe each other out for all I care. They founded and destroyed more civilizations than I can count, and never once did they learn anything from it. They d they're just hairless monkeys who decided they were the rulers of this planet after they spread like a plague to cover their surface. I couldn't possibly care less of what happens to them. They would be doing the world a favor by dying out. I'm sorry. You used to have your own nation and people to protect, didn't you? Please, pay me no heed. You have every right to be angry. You must think I'm a horrible person. You're an amazing heroic spirit, and I'm just using you to satisfy my own selfish desires. Not at all. Emotions are lo looked down upon only because they are fleeting and fickle. But your feelings have not wavered one bit. Even across time itself, you have conviction, not emotion. And there is no greater honor for a warrior than fighting and fight. And there is no greater honor for a warrior than in fighting for his master's convictions. Saber. As such, I have no regrets whatsoever about wielding my sword as your servant. Thank you, Saber. I don't deserve a servant like you. Ain't that the truth?
I must be in a prison. My phone. I can't believe we made it this close without being seen. These bounded field devices are amazing. I'm afraid we can't get any closer, though. This won't be enough to let us make our way inside. And our only choice is to her tried and true method of distraction. Lady Jinke is an assassin. As such, you should be better at sneaking around than anyone else here know. And I am a master of bringing in ruckus. Yeah. You are quite the strategist. You came up with the plan before our master even had a chance to fret. Oh, it's nothing. I'm quite at use to explaining what needs to be done before my lord begins panicking. Our whole army was ch chock full of soldiers and who looked like uh, who liked to leave before they looked. That sounds like a huge headache. Hardly. I would simply verbally whip them up into a frenzy whenever it's necessary and employ the odd hair brain scheme to help my lord learn a lesson when he was being foolish. <laughs> Those battlefields were wonderfully fulfilling. With no end of stimulation. Our phone. Anyway, this does seem like the best plan for the situation. If Cell, Marsh, and Red, uh, Lub. Uh, whoever is this walking storm of destruction is making a big en enough commotion at the front gate. I can slip in undetected and meet up with Da Vinci and the others. It'd be great if I could capture Queen Skya too, but that'll depend on how much time you're able to buy me. Leave it to me. I will show you the power of a steed who can run a thousand Lee without breaking a sweat. Lord he Red Hair, Lu Bu, I trust this goes without saying, but just to be sure, don't run too far. If I think you are going getting too far away, I won't hesitate to take a shot at you, is that clear? Yeah. <laughs> so you'll let me know if I get too close to leaving the strategic zone. That's great. Uh, at any rate, I'm all set for combat. Let's do this. Oh, it sounds like they're here. Let's listen to all that noise. Miss Cell would never charge head and head along without good cause. Which must mean. Sorry we took so long, guys. Is everyone okay? Well, I wish I could toast our reunion. I'm afraid that we'll have to wait. How is Goodolf doing? I found an informant firmary on the way, so I made sure to grab a few bags of glucose strip and an IV catheter. Alright, Jin K. Better stay on top of things. Excellent. Then I believe that now is the time for us to strike back ourselves. We can't put everything on Miss Cell's shoulders after all. No kidding. Listen, I can hear something going on inside the prison now. It seems Jinke has successfully rendezvoused with the others. They must have waited no time setting up explosives. I can hear some live, lovely explosions taking place even as we speak. Yeah, now that's not what I'm talking about. I can feel my warrior's blood dancing in excitement. A phone. Come on, master. You can't be left behind. Let's keep on pounding that front gate. Hmm, hmm, so this goes here and oh, hmm, 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 hmm. How goes the Shadow Board its analysis, Jim Beale Majesty? What a fascinating device, truly fascinating, and yet it plagues us with so many doubts. We understand the principles in its operating structure, but we cannot for the life of us understand why they would make it so small. Our engineering could produce something of equal capacity capability, but it would be a gargantuan vessel. We can only wonder as to why they would devote so much effort to making it so very compact. The electronics alone are positively maddening. We feel as if we are dissecting a flea. We can barely remember the last time we were taxed to our limit as we are now. I see. Miniaturization, huh? We can even see where they chose to compromise on performance in exchange for efficiency. Perhaps they were simply starved for resources. Even if that were so, why would they use silicon in, of all things? What is wrong with vacuum tubes? Ah! Hmm, what is it, Hanjin? Well, well, um, it's got me thinking. If these people can make electronic devices that small, 
Maybe that means I could also build communication devices small enough that they could s s secret away on their person too. You mean hide away on their person? Hmm. I'll arrange for more guards to be dispatched to the Hong Kong prison right now. Do not bother, it is already too late. We just received word that hostilities are already underway. Ah, uh, just what sort of world do these people come from? Can you imagine it? Ordinary people talking amongst themselves across vast distances without relying on us or asking our permission. This could spread Confucianism like wildfire. We would not even be able to stomp it out at its source. They truly do bring disaster wherever they go. We must wipe them out immediately. They are like an airborne disease. We cannot let them bring further taint to the Empire. Uh-huh. Well, you know, Akuta Hirako is also there. Have her go there, then you stamp us out all out at once. Ah, oh, come on. We're fighting a saber. Him again. I'm honestly kind of getting tired of fighting the same saber. He's not really improving in skill at all. He's just an annoyance with a noble phantasm that kind of reduces our noble phantasm a little bit. It doesn't reduce it much to where it's impossible. It's just really annoying. So keep Okita Orita and Ishtar. I guess I'm going back to my archer lineup. John, where are you at? There you are. And now, let's bring Chloe. She has evade on herself. Should help. Hey, hey. Have you been sell? Did you miss me? Da Vinci, I'm so glad you're okay. Sure, and we brought along a special guest. Yep, yep, and they brought along Koi and Skaya. <laughs> Koi and Skaya. Uh, easy foe. Please calm down. Well, as humiliating as this may be, I have to admit that I really can't stick around here. So I suppose I have no choice but to cooperate. Naturally, I had a promise to provide an antidote in exchange for our help. I trust you will fulfill your end of the bargain, Koi and Skaya. What is done is done. Like you humans, I make a point of always keeping my word. There's no sense sticking around here any longer. Let's go. You will go not be going anywhere. I would hope you know better than to underestimate us by now. Prince of Lanling. You're surrounded. This time we're going to finish you off. No, you're not. Yes, I can see you are deadly serious about that. Be wary, Master. The enemy was careful to wait until we were all gathered together before surrounding us. As he says, he is very much determined to emerge victorious. It almost feels like this whole thing might even be a trap. Are you serious? It's really come all the way here to rescue allies armed only with pluck. Uh, hey, come on. It was all pluck, just... Mostly. Huh, I'd forgotten what you were like. I should have known better than to count on Caldea for help. All right, I see how it is. This is no time to be worrying about the appearances, so I'd better pitch in to help out as well. What? You would go over to the enemy's side so easily. That's the savior on skin, Alter Ego. Well, yeah, if Kishi Wong's punishment wasn't reason enough, your old master was just seven times with me, remember? Besides, it's just like I told her, in this world you're either a client or a product. And right now, regardless of the circumstances that brought us here, Caldea is a valued client. As such, I have no problem with whatsoever list listing yesterday's client as today's featured product. Yikes, remind me to not give her any personal information, not so much as my full name. Besides, isn't the occasional face turn like this kind of dramatic? Is she friend or is she foe? What could the mysterious and beautiful coin skies to objective possibly be? Foe? Dying in a foyer. <laughs> uh, 
Now then, allow me to present one of my very best products. A walking disaster from a different path than probably even history. It's where breeders imported directly from a world of snow and undying fire. Introducing one of Nine Fox Foundations. Hey, that's what NFF means. Ladies and greatest of your turn, straight from the land of Frost Giants. I don't remember if she ever mentioned that before. If she did, I completely forgot. Well, now, she, so she can summon a familiar so large and powerful merely by tearing her off a bit of her hair and blowing on it. Oh, what the? A giant? How the hell did a giant get here? All right, Caldea, go ahead and let him handle the little guys while you focus on the servant. It's about to say that I love that face that Quentin Sky is making. <laughs> she may be annoying, but I at least like her character. Which again, me. I'd like to summon her as a servant, but would she really be that easy to get? No. Would I blow out my sink? What's trying for her? No comment. No comment on that. Prince of Lan Ling would usually be quite a formidable foe. But luckily for you, his sorry excuse for master should make him considerably easier to defeat. Silence, Fox Woman. You know nothing about her. Of course, and it doesn't surprise me at all that I forgot to use the Ishtar's dang ability. It honestly does not surprise me at all that I forgot to do freaking Mana Gem. Mana Burst. It doesn't surprise me at all. I keep forgetting to do that dang skill every freaking time. But either way, let's do this. Uncle Kigoshi. Let's see how much damage she can do right now. I'd like it if she could break, you know, the entire bar right now. And we can set on the second one right after. <laughs> Man, I love each time. <laughs> I love it. That's right, it's Jack East Tire. Do it again. You fool. You are a major fool for attacking each time. A second time. Hmm. This is... <laughs> I'll save that for a, a final Noble Phantasm. Second, Mukir Sandan. I got the King Galaxy. And do this purely for crit stars. I'm not gonna get a second chance of massive crits. That 89,000 man really helped a lot. <laughs> Again, I don't understand what the silent noble phantasms are about. What's with the silent noble phantasms, man? It's like you hear it once and then just stops. My game is bugging out. I don't like it. Alright, that, that, and that. Hey, you star, can you possibly get some more crits? Damn. Oh, hey, Wave got a crit. Okay, that works. Look at that, he hates Ishtar so much that he is essentially trying to kill her right now. What's the matter, Saber? You can't take out East Tower. Doesn't that suck for you? It's like you're invincible, is it? just like Jean. It only lasts twice. He's still trying! Good God! 
He just won't give her up. Extremely annoying, mind you. Do that. 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 And that. Wow, 90. Jesus. Hey, where the heck is that pick up? What? I don't think he'll not go anywhere. And again, I'm not scared about his noble phantasm because it it does essentially nothing. It lowers us and buffs him. Yay! I've dealt with both him and the Berserker before. It's perfectly fine. So I will say getting lowered down to 46 is not a, an ideal way to go. But either way, Jonu now can do her Noble Phantasm instead of Yustar. I really should get her skill to 10 and I wouldn't have had to use Weaver's ability and maybe I didn't. Oh well. I know it was a waste of Yusuf's mana gem, but wasn't sure if he was going to take anyone out that round. Again, we didn't hear her. Why is it cutting out the sound of the Noble Phantasm? Is it my headset cutting out the Noble Phantasm sound? I don't, I don't think so. It's legitimately my game cutting them out. That's annoying. Hi, Waver. Oh, look. Now Yisar is not going to be taken out because Mashu will defend. <laughs> Prince of Lan Ling really kind of sucks, man. He kind of sucks. He might be a good servant for us, but currently Akuta is not bringing out his most potential, man. After dealing with uh, the saber from the last lost belt, whatever his name is, it's currently escaping my mind. After dealing with him, this saber is nothing. He's literally kind of useless. I'm sorry to say it, but he's kind of weird. Oh, hello! She just ordered him to get up with the command spell. Huh, how dare you, Akuta? We still had more power to take him out as well. You weren't going to win that. Especially with Koi and Sky on our side right now. Akuta keeps using command spells like there's no tomorrow. This girl is deadly serious about finishing us off. True, unfortunately for her, it's also going to be her downfall. Since she's now used to f providing real support, it couldn't be more obvious where she's providing it from. And boom! Uh. Master! Just a quick little booby trap I whipped up from the one I picked up from around here. Do you like it? What a wicked fox. I've never seen such lovely skills and looks in one evil package before. Oh, damn. Curse you, fox woman. Oh, crap, that didn't finish her. <sighs> Sal, hold Prince of Lundling up. But if you do, don't let him get to his master. Master! I couldn't stop him. Saber. I'm here, master. Well, but now we're screwed. Come on, everyone. Let's run for it. Huh, but why? There's no way Akuta can keep fighting with a fatal wound like that, right? Oh, right. You still don't know what she really is, do you? Look, let me give you some honest advice for once. Leave the servant alone and get out of here while you still can. Uh, Lan Ling. 
Master, now that things have come to this, there's no other choice. I beg you, sacrifice me to save yourself. No, that's the one thing I'll never... I'm sure you dislike the idea. Feeding on others is the very thing you loathe humans for, after all. But if ever there was a time to swallow your pride, and do what must be done to survive, it is now. For at long last, you have finally been reunited with your beloved. Think back to all those many years you spent grieving in solitude and isolation. Unling. Miss Survive, my master. This time you and Jean Yu will live happily out for together. This time you will st share in each other's fate. Uh. -huh. Oh boy. Uh, tap. Well, what in the world is that? Did she just eat her servant? Life absorption, medical energy metabolization, no way. She couldn't possibly pull that off unless she was a blood sucking kid or something. No, wait, even if she was, this is a servant she's eating. To swallow an entire heroic spirit class spirit origin koi. She'd have to be a true ancestor or. Wait, does this mean that Kuti Yunako is actually. Are you sure you want it to go this way? All I ask, Master. That you answer one last question. You must have come to know thousands, if not millions, of great heroes over the course of eternity. So out of all those many heroes, why did you choose to summon this lonely Gao Shenggong as your servant? He once had the courage to speak to me without fear. Even all these years later, that memory still warms my heart. Oh, I could ask for no greater honor. Thank you, my master. You may read. You may read. You may read. Did he just say you may read? Oh, come on. Is that really a surprise at this point? It's not as though she's been shy about showing her affection for Zhang Yu. A detective of super supposed caliber should have seen her for the who she really is a long time ago. But that again, considering how much trouble you lot have with spirit, heroic spirit and ray shifting and whatnot. I suppose the idea that a genuine article who's been alive for the early 2,000 years and was hiding under your noses all this time must have been unthinkable. Not even the other cryptos had any idea. The only ones who knew the truth were myself and... It must be difficult for you to understand. For you are eternal youth and for you to are nothing more than a curse. I only wish I could convey to you how comforting it is for those of us doomed to rot and fade away. To know there is someone out there whose beauty will remain pristine forever. Hello, Yumei Ren. Wait! Wait! Yumei Ren was Akuta! The assassin I tried to summon for was Akuta! Well, 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 that's a total mind F. I wasn't expecting that you may read the freaking assassin I was trying to summon for, like once or twice, it was actually Akuta Hirako. That is a major surprise. I did not see that coming. I mean, I completely forgot, honestly, that she was even part of a banner. But after seeing her, I remember that she was. Oh my god. I had hoped to finish you all off in a manner befitting a human, as I've been presenting myself as one all this time. But now that you have forced my hand, I can no longer afford to be magnanimous. This ends now, Caldea. My curse is shall obliterate you before the night is out. Well, now what? You have against a true ancestor who just devoured an entire heroic spirit, spirit origin and all, and she's pissed off beyond belief. Can I just leave now, please? <laughs> I was not expecting this. I was wondering who she was when I saw her before, because again, I had no clue. Well, this got very interesting very fast. Travelers of the Century. Hey, man. Because they did the banner and I tried to summon her for her and she was an assassin, this question mark, I already know exactly what it is. Let's just say that bringing red hair is a complete and utter fallacy. If we bought him, he would get destroyed immediately. 
So, once again, Weaver. Okita Orita, come on. See, my problem is I don't really have any good servants against an assassin. Yes, I have casters, but they're all technically multi-target. So if anything, doing a double waiver strategy with Okita Orita might be my best bet. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it, man. I'm gonna do it. And then switch out Jean with Merlin. The cheese strat is real. <laughs> And last but not least, let's bring... Hmm... Elizabeth Bathory! Mecha Ellie Chan! Let's just try this out and see what happens. Because I know that she's an assassin. Unless they made her an assassin in the banner, but she just isn't an assassin here. That would really screw me over. Section 12, Travelers of the Century. Oh, we're starting straight out with the battle. Yeah, yeah, we're fighting an assassin, all right. Coin Sky is backing. Oh, thank you, Coin Sky. You just gave us guts. Coin Sky dies. Ski? I don't know how to feel about this right now. Currently, she's our enemy. At the same time, I really like her. And I want her to be my servant, but I already know that ain't gonna happen. Curses! Well. Second, Mukir Sandan. You have guts. We'll be fine. It's not like she has any buffs to, you know, stop damage from being done to her or anything. Look at all the sexy crit stars! 19 of it. Oh, son of a... Luckily, she has a vision on her. But my wave is on the other hand. Hey, she gave us more. <laughs> she gave us more. All right. More defensive, please. I need defenses now. More than ever. <laughs> Still nothing there. And returning formation. Second, Mercury Sandan. Come on, you Miren. Get this defense down, please. Take more damage. At least defense down actually worked. I wasn't expecting the stun to work. So, that's still a part of my plan. Ooh, nice crit. Damn it, she gave herself freaking charge again. No! How many turns do we need to survive? Bye, Wavers. Nice knowing you. Oh, she's just going to cheese the system again. You know what I mean? I mean, seriously, if she's just gonna cheese the system, I might as well. Go, go, Gadget Merlin! You've gotta keep Okta Ortis' health above a certain margin. That way she keeps healing herself. Oh, we're getting healed. Come on, you made it! No! 
Garden of Avalon. Oh, my God. Second, Muku Sandan. Wait on, is it anything? No, it is not. Second, Muku Sandan. Hey, thanks for attacking Mashu. Did you heal enough so you didn't die? Oh, God damn it. Okay, give me self evasion. And Noble Fiends has them increased. Each speed merit. It stars each turn in defense. Nice crit. Nice crit. No, Mashu has a noble thing to but she no longer has guts. Mashu, no! Did I manage to do this? Did I actually manage to do it enough? My god, did I actually just pull this off? On my first try? No! 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 That hurts! That hurts! So much! Why did I get hold? I just get a crit when it mattered. I just lost. <laughs> I shouldn't have talked. God damn it! Why did I talk? I'm not sure what I'm doing. 
Okay. I really hate you, man. man. She made me end up having to bring out my freaking uh. Let's just say I don't think that okay, Ibaraki is gonna survive this. She has so much defensive. But no, she didn't. Move debuff. Pull yourself up. She may survive this yet for one more turn. And here goes both waivers. I hate you so much, you made it I hate you so much. God dang it. Give Ibaraki more, more, more. Invincible. It's almost time for her to use her noble phantasm. Oh my god. For the record, this is only my second attempt, by the way. I'm making it sound like I've done this for a lot longer. So this is literally my second attempt right after Okito Wodita failed to get that final freaking hit off. I'm just talking the way I am because I'm still salty over that fact. Okay. Can we stun her? No! You see though, here's here's my problem. I need to be able to... Tr tr uh, no, I'm not. I have no way of healing her either. Well. Great to go into Shimon. Come on, Ibaraki. I believe in my little freaking tank. My glass cannon that could. You haven't failed me yet. There's another 208,000 off of her HP pool. <laughs> this is the run. No, Ibaraki. You fought well. You fought very well. You can take a rest. You know what would suck is that if I had to do this not once but twice But I'm assuming because of how ridiculous this fight actually is is that we only have to do one break bar of hers I'm assuming we only have to do one if we have to do two of this nonsensical BS of a fight Oh, that is where I draw the line. That at that point is so not right. Uh, Masha, is there no way to heal yourself? No. All right. This, this, and this. I should have done Merlin's healing a little bit. That would have helped. But at least Mashu surviving Merlin goodbye. You fought well. Mecha Elichan gets to survive for one more turn.
Oh wow, you're leaving this up to Masha? You're serious? Oh my god. Mashu, please! Do not fail me, please! Yes! You gotta quit! Oh my god, please let it end! Please! I don't wanna fight you, Mayuren, again! Please, end the battle! End the battle! Thank you! Holy crap! That was insane! My god! My little glass cannon did it, though! She took us all the way. How can she attack with such power so quickly? She should have run out of magical energy ages ago. She's not using her own magical energy at all. She's sucking up the endless supply of mana from the world itself and using it as her own. So this is what a true ancestor and incarnated elemental can do. I never would have thought that China had one of its own. Fighting one of them is like taking on a tsunami or a hurricane with your fists. Um, I'm sorry. That went right over my head. Could you dumb it down to, say, horse level? Simply put, we've been quite thoroughly back into a quarter here. Huh, that bad, right? Oh, yes. If we're all going to die anyway, might I suggest you blow yourselves up? Up as so everyone can except except me truly go out with a bang. Will you two just shut up already? I don't think I can keep this up any longer, Master. Enough playing around, Akuta. No, now that you've re revealed your true form, we suppose we should no longer call you by your alias. But then. You have never given us any other name. Hmm, what should we call you now? You would call my wrath, my curses, merely playing around. A worldly king. What else would you call this? Did you enjoy eternity merely so you could curse these people to death? Undying one, true one. We have too much respect for you to see you lose your way like this. Return here before you go any further. Recall the pledge you still have yet to keep, and do what must be done first. Hmm. So you do not want me to do anything unless it benefits you, is that it? We are telling you to remember what it is you came here to do. Just what is the nature of the relationship between these two? A pledge? Does that mean she made some other deal with Kishi Wang I didn't know about? Those of us who endure eternally should not be so swept up in fleeting emotions. You must not forget what it is you truly seek, how close you are to having it in your grasp, and what you must yet to do. All right, I understand. I shall follow your advice for now. Akuta, I mean your main friend, has left the battlefield. Oh, I'm exhausted. This stuff can be such a pain. As much as I despise humans, I do have to give them credit for one thing. And the weapons they make are so much easier to use. There's nothing better than something that lets you kill a bunch of humans just by pulling a trigger. Koyanskaya, I take it you knew that Akuta Hinaka was actually Miren all along. Isn't that the, the Song of Geisha dedicated to her? Ah yes, the one frequently mentioned in discussions of the Battle of Geisha. My strength plucked up the hills. I might shadow the world. But the times were against me, and Dapple runs no more. When Dapple runs no more, what, the, what then can I do? Are you, my you? What will your fate be? So this means Amy Ren wasn't human, and it also has been alive for thousands of years. It was shocking enough to find out that the legend of Yumei Ren was actually a bloodsucker, or rather a true ancestor. But then, why would she be, be bothering and infiltrating Caldea and applying to be a race ship candidate? And if that weren't enough, now she's a crypto hold up in a Chinese lost belt. Uh, none of this makes any sense. True, if all you look at are the facts, the odds seem pretty long indeed. But if you trace them back to their source, this answer couldn't be simpler. This all happened because Marty's planned for it to happen. 
As I suspected, Director Murray's Berenimisfer must have seemed like a good person, but at heart he was still a mage. A mage's idea of doing good and a human's idea of doing good are very, very different. Murray may have been just a person, but it seems like he also managed to do good, and that is his best as a mage. I expect he was must have been anxious. I imagine he had to wonder if ray shifting was even possible, and if it was whether humans could actually survive the process. I guess that's what prompted him to bring you Ray Ren on as a backup plan of sorts. No doubt he must have thought that even if it turned out humans couldn't w withstand a ray shift, she would either survive or could be resuscitated thanks to her sturdy true ancestor body. That must be why he covered up for her true identity under the name Akuta Hirako. And sent her a formal invitation to Caldea after she had been hiding away in the margins of history for centuries. That would have been the previous version of me was summoned to Caldea. I do recall Akuta Hirako was already part of Caldea's staff even before Timei was formed. Marty's Berry must have wanted to prove the viability of race shifting come hella high water. Agreed. I imagine he meant to use her as a guinea pig to make the experiment work. Even if there turned out to be more no mere humans who fit the bill whatsoever. But as luck would happen, not only did there turn out to be plenty of viable candidates. The demi servant plan he had come up with to improve the odds of summoning a heroic spirit of the race shift worked out as well. All of which meant that Marty's Berry no longer needed to bother giving Akuta Hirako more special treatment. She was ultimately assigned to Team A, for no other reason to than to fill the roster, so to speak. Now do you understand? Your great director was hiding a true ancestor in this organization all this time. It's no wonder Caldea came under you and scrutiny after something that shady. The fact that none of the surviving staff had any idea what is just the ultra... I Ironic icing on the cake. So I'm surprised you may, may run. Agree to all that, being a tree and sister and all. Oh, that's the part you find strange. Huh? Well, I don't suppose anyone with a finite lifespan could ever really understand the psychology of a truly eternal being. So I have to g give Marysbury credit for being able to figure out what it was she wanted. It couldn't have been easy for him to convince her since she really, really hates humans. At the very least, I'm sure he never offered anything as cheesy as a mink co coat. Hmm, I'm not so sure what to make of all of this, since I really don't know Marty's very all that well. I'm sure Romani knew him well enough that he could weigh in with something useful, but... Now, never mind that, all that now. Come on, let's get out of here. Agreed. Now that we made an enemy of Kishi Wong, lingering in one place for too long is tantamount to suicide. Got it. Then let's keep our campfires bounded field up and put some distance between us and this place. Man, it really sucks that they took the border. Now we have to carry our patient on foot. Uh, please, no more tuna. I couldn't eat another bite. I saw something that looked like a truck in the hangar. Maybe we could use that. Me you mean the thing they used when they brought me here? It may be better than walking, but we'll feel every bump of the road and then some. Well, beggars can't be choosers. We'll just have to make the best of it. So weird seeing Koi and Skaya with us right now. Long, long ago, this was a beautiful place. Even today, I still remember the time when there was nothing in the sky but wind and nothing on the ground but plants. This was in ages b past, long before anyone ever thought to claim lay claim to this planet. Before I was separated from the world, before I even had form of my own. But my memories of what came after... Are all of fear, animosity, and a perverse kind of envy. You and I both look the same, which is why I don't understand. Why do you hate me so much? Why do you despise me so much? You would attack me so viciously, all because I cannot die. I never asked for eternal life. I would have welcomed death. I would have liked nothing more than to fall into oblivion alongside my beloved. To an ancestor, blood sucker. I don't know anything about those, but that didn't stop you from deciding that's what I was. You said my inability to die made me unclean, but my inability to age made me a monster. 
None of you listened to what I had to say. Once you decided I was a monster, you just kept treating me like one. I understand you hate humans. I know you want nothing to do with us. But no matter how much you may wish it were otherwise, humans will never truly leave you alone. Once they learn you exist, executors will come far and wide to, to hunt you down. I cannot do anything to change that fact. As such, I cannot apologize on behalf of humanity. All I can do is give you an outlet for your resentment, to keep my head bowed, no matter what manner of abuse you heap on upon it. It is what, it is with that in mind that I would like to make you a proposal, even if you think me shameless for doing so. If you wish to obtain peace and quiet, the only choice is to move yourself somewhere outside the bounds of human activity. Mankind has grown far too numerous. Indeed, this last century must have been a nightmare for you. They excavate mountains, chop down forts, and greatly expand their territory with no end in sight. You must have already realized that at this rate, there will no longer be any safe place left for you to hide. So speaking as one partially responsible for this state of affairs, I would like to offer you a deal. There is a small isolated community of mages in one of the most remote areas of this world. Its residents are well aware that prying into the other community members' lives is taboo. I think you would be right at home in Caldea. As long as you play along with the false identity I will prepare for you, no one will ever be the wiser. In exchange, I would like you to assist me with my search. A dream quest of sorts to re realize my family's greatest dream. Oh yes, I almost forgot to introduce myself. My name is Modest Birdie and Emis and Emisphere. I hope you can see that our interests are aligned in Spirit of Gaia, as one of the last followers of the moon left on Earth. I would love to have your help in making both of our dreams come true. True human, you may read. I knew he was lying. He was far from the first ghoul who had tried to uncover my secrets in their own quest for immortality. And yet, by this point... I was far too tired to hear tear him to pieces. I wasn't sure whether he was being truthful or not, but he was right about one thing at least. I no longer have a place in this land. There is no darkness to hide me, no light I can join. There is nowhere left for me to go. Yet even so, I can still feel the grip of his despair over my fate coiling around my heart. Ah you, my you. What will be a fate? That's right, I seek an end to eternity. A place where I can hold my head high and declare that I've gone as far as I can. My sole wish, my one final request, is that I may tell my dearly departed that he no longer need weep for me. Awaken, fairy. The time has come to return to reality. It has been five months since your arrival. We have now scanned your entire body 48 times in total. Our analysis is complete. Every last one of your body's secrets has been recorded within our memory circuits. We have at least last learned the secrets of Zenra and Zimmortality. You did well, fairy. Or perhaps we should continue to call you Akuta Hirako. You may call me whatever you wish, your Imperial Majesty. You may have anything you like as a reward, or is he alone still enough as you initially requested? He is. I desire nothing else. Then per the terms of our agreement, we hereby bequeath custody of Kwaiji Zero to you. You have served us faithfully for centuries, our very first mechanical retainer. Congratulations on your retirement. Thank you, your Imperial Majesty. It is with a heavy heart that I take your leave for the last time. Hmm. Zhang Yu, hmm. We do not know what sort of name a mechanical retainer may have ha made for himself in your history. But was this Zhang Yu person worthy of being entrusted with your mystic Zen Ren? I could ask much the same of you, your Imperial Majesty. Why would you need to study me now, when you have long possessed the Fusang tree itself? True, we did learn the mystics of life through our obtainment of the Fusang tree. But we never came across a single sage or fairy in all the time we spent exploring their lands. You are the first genuine fairy we have ever laid eyes on, Akuta Hinako. I see. 
At any rate, this fulfills the final part of our contract. Tell us, what will you do now? If possible, I would like to stay in a remote part of your land and live out my days in peace. How modest of you, but will Caldea let you do that? The Caldeans have already incurred your wrath. There's no need to dirty my hands further. It is only a matter of time now before one of your valiant mountly warriors presents you with their heads. Ah yes, we see. You do not want Zhang Yu to see you getting rough, so to speak. Very well. We prefer this mild-mannered act to the true colors you display at Hong Kong anyway. However, there is one thing we must ask you before you leave our service. Is this world going to perish? It, it most likely will perish if we defeat you. At this point, I can no longer tell which will emerge triumphant. The will of this world to survive or the will that would see this world destroyed. All I can truthfully say is that I couldn't possibly care less. A good answer. We know now that if nothing else, you will never oppose us. Now then, if you'll excuse me. Are you sure about this, Imperial Majesty? I believe she still knows more about the monsters that have invaded us than she is letting on. Yes, we are w sure she does. I was shaken when sh she's. I was shaken when she did not care if this world lived or died, despite saying she would stay. She is a Zenren, a true human, the only one in this world who is on par with our royal personage. He had she voiced her intent to do something along the lines of protecting the world, then her wrath would have been swift and merciless. That would indicate her desire to fight us for this world, after all this time we spent protecting it. But that is not what she said, indeed. She showed she has no attachment to this world whatsoever. In consequence, she can coexist with us as we rule. For there can only be one human who controls the world in its entirety. Indeed, your imperial majesty, it is just as you say. Having two or more humans exist inevitably leads to quarreling. This cannot be permitted as this world's only human. We shall guide the common people with our love. All they need concern themselves with is tending their land, filling their bellies, sleeping, reproducing. What could be more peaceful? Oh my god. Hour and 19 minutes, almost an hour 20. How many is this got for? Oh wow, that wasn't even the end of section section twelve. I thought it was. <laughs> That's how long the story was and how long the fight was. Okay, sector twelve. Let's finish it up, then I'll end the episode off. Wasn't expecting it this to be the only things we do, but well. You got our hands behind the back, right? Good. Make sure that that wire is nice and tight, and don't forget the shackles. I found. Oh, come on. Is this really necessary? May I remind you, I just helped save your lives back there. I can't believe a little glucose trip is all it took to get Cordy back and up and running again. It really goes show what a, um, unique person Mr. Golf is, doesn't it, senpai? Fo fo fo! Wait, did, did I really just do fo fo fo? Well, uh, also, yeah, oh jeez. I see Foz using Coin Sky's head as a dance floor. <laughs> Foz really going to town on Coin Sky's head. Fo 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 fo. Understand how you feel all too well, Tunny. In fact, I can no longer restrain myself either. A cursed wench. Now you're wearing a Chinese dress of all things. Your wiles won't work on me, Koi and Skya. You, you, you won't it fool me ever again. Now, what shall I do with you? Oh no, I can't believe I've been captured by such a brute. Whatever will become of me now? He must have such atrocities in mind as to put King Shi Wang's punishment to shame. A veritable smorgasbord of torches like the likes of which has never been witnessed in all of human history. No doubt he's going to carnally humiliate me in unspeakable ways after keeping me caged like a wild animal. Oh, I'm so scared. Smorgasbord? Carnally humiliate? What? I mean, yes, I'm ruthless, but I'd never go that far. Fa 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 fa. 
All right, that's enough of that. Remember your intel slides are online here, Gordy. Oh, yes, that's right. Where's the antidote for the poison you used on me and Cell? The one you promised to hand over in exchange for our help. I'll even spare you the shackles. Go on, then. But it's the antidote from that bountiful bosom of yours. You're not really helping yourself with that, Gordy. Stop staring at her bosom, all right? Don't think I don't know how sexy your cleavage looks in that Chinese dress. The hand over the antidote makes the hopes and dreams of every red-blooded male come true. <laughs> Ah, oh, you're seriously not helping yourself with this, man. Of course, I'll keep my end of the bargain. Here you go. Just one bottle. That's it. Yep, one bottle for one person. So now we gotta see who makes the call. Will Gordy selfishly take it and ruin everyone's chances of, you know, the world coming back? Or does he decide to do the self-sacrificing thing and have me take it so that way I can actually continue to save humanity and he ends up dying as a savior because of the poison? That's right. A single dose is all I have. And to be warned, sharing it between you will just make it useless. What are you trying to pull? For phone. Oh, boy, come on now. Think about it. Would I really go to the trouble of preparing an antidote when the whole point of the poison was to kill my target? I just brought along a single dose for insurance, in case I ended up taking the poison myself by mistake. That's the one and only contingency I prepared for. And now, as I promised, I've handed over that single dose of contingency antidote to all of you. Whatever happens next is out of my hands. I wonder which one will get to take it. His Excellency, the Great Gordal, for Galdea's one and only master. And just so you know, Sal, you don't have much time left either. You might not be feeling too bad thanks to Marsha's protection. But make no mistake, the poison is doing its job. Jean Shui Ming Mai dries you out like from the inside. You only have a few days left to live at best. I had a feeling that might be the case. Ugh. Senpai! As much as it sucks, I think we have to put our personal feelings aside in favor of the larger picture. So I suggest we... So, I challenge you to a game of fuck, paper, scissors! Really, Gordy? Really? Ah! Only one of us will go on living! That means this is a clash between our wills to survive. And when the stakes are this high, rock, paper, scissors is the only true impartial judge. Well, normally I would prefer a coin toss, but that would give me an unfair advantage to rock, paper, scissors it is. Mr. Gordolf, um, are you really sure you want to settle this like that? It's alright, Marsh. They are content to make a decision this way. It is not our place to interfere. Just you and me, and whatever hand we choose to play. A fair fight if there ever was one. What do you say, young lady? This is our personal judgment day, huh? Very well. I'm glad you're being such a good sport about this. We're to lose, no hard feelings, okay? That includes having one of your servants taken by force, and other unbecoming chicanery. Well... All right, let's do this. John, Ken. I'm going scissors. Oh, are you mad? You're supposed to use paper here. I said I would use rocks, so I was sure you would use paper in response. All I had to do was then use pa scissors, and this would all be over. Can't you see that? Uh, Gordy, that's not really the issue here. Also, Sal, I think we need to have a little talk later. Were you trying to lose on purpose? Whether she was or not, Mr. Gordolf made the challenge for this particular duel. Tell us, Mr. Gordolf, what were you thinking when you used scissors after declaring you would use rock? What was I thinking? I was thinking I'd do whatever it takes to survive. 
That's what I was thinking. Go ahead and call me whatever you want. Smart, wise, dependable. I'll take any criticism you threw at me. But I don't want to die. Good grief. Hey, Sal. It's been a good show and all, but I think it's time we got this over with, don't you? Yep, go for it. What? Hey, what's the meaning of this full Nelson Jin Kay? Okay, Gordy, open wide. Uh, uh, what are you? Uh, hey, that's medicines. Uh, uh. There you go, down the hatch. Uh, uh. Are you nuts? Why did you make me swallow it? That was the only antidote we had. Now what are you going to do? Well, I couldn't just let you die. After all, I wouldn't even be here now if it were not for you. That's right, you only survived because Director Gordolf ate half of their cake. If he hadn't eaten the whole thing, he would have died on this spot. The Director never said a word about that, so... Indeed, whatever the circumstances may have been, the end result is that Gordolf saved Cell's life. And despite being well aware of that, he has not so much as mentioned it all this time. No doubt he decided it would be unfair to hold that over Miss Cell's head, given how she was about to head off into battle. <laughs> He's blushing now. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'd put it quite that way. So now we're even. You fool. What do you get off being so de de decent even at such a young age? But very well. This is, of course, merely a matter of priorities. There can be no team without its leader. Yes, but there can be no team without its... Master! You know, the one that helps save humanity? Obviously, you're not cut out to be a master. Now that I'm fully back in action, all of our further plans are guaranteed to succeed. What a joke. How utterly revolting. Maybe I'll just gobble you up from the head down. Oh, it seems we have a lady here who can't quite contain her murderous rage. To me, why don't be silly? That this has all been a hugely entertaining farce. Ah, oh, there's nothing quite like humans, is there? I'm so touched I feel as though my heart might just burst. Oh, foul. I'm afraid you have grossly underestimated us. If you thought this little performance of yours would hide the truth. That medicine you headed over is not the only means of neutralizing the poison, is it? Oh, and on what are you basing that? Oh, so hopeful as assertion, might I ask? But you chose to come to this particular last belt in the first place. You made sure to wait until the time was right before you went about poisoning Miss Cell. Were your poison truly incurable, you would only need to flee once the deed was done. As long as you had managed to cover your tracks, you could escape without ever leaving a trace. And yet by the time we had arrived in this last belt, you were already here. Now why would you do something so foolish? The answer is simple, because there is something in this last belt you needed to keep away from us. And what else could that be but a way to cure the poison you used? Oh, I can't stand men who have nothing more to offer than their minds. I imagine you must have heard that from Irene Adler a lot too, didn't you? I'll thank you to not draw comparisons between her and an agent of pure evil such as yourself. Boom. Now then. As we can be sure that Miss Koyanskaya's purpose in coming here was to protect it, we must simply ask ourselves what this cure might be. It would have to be something already lost in proper human history, as well as something unattainable in any other lost belt which leaves. Aha, uh -huh, the Fusang Tree. Quite so. Though there are many things unique to this lost belt, the Fusang Tree is the only thing I can think of that would be impossible to obtain elsewhere. As the key to a sage world's mystics, we know that it has no end of biochemical applications, as Kishi Wang has so aptly demonstrated. I see no other magecraft system that could possibly be used to refine such a strange and complex poison. Well, I suppose there's no point in playing dumb any longer. Yes, you're right. That poison was derived from the Fusang tree. The substance made by distilling its root with yin energy is called Zhan Shui Ming Mai, or Immortal Decline. And the one made by decocking its leaves with y yang, and then she is called Zhong Yo Ming Mai, or Immortal Lifeline. Either way, whether you're making poison or antidote, you need something from the Fusang Tree. Of course, you could always make an antidote without the Fusang Tree, as long as you could extract something with the same components. 
But we all know Bobby and history lost those kinds of mistakes long ago, don't we? Which means the internet died on me was your one and only hope. Given that I held Cell's life in my hands, I did consider making her my slave and forcing her to do my bidding. Oh my, being Koi and Sky a slave, huh? Wonder how that life would work out. But I couldn't get Akuta's report out of my head. If only I'd never heard her mention it was a lost belt. Where the Fusang tree remained alive and in human custody. So once you knew, you felt you had no choice but to go and gut it. You must be quite the worry wart yourself. I prefer to think of it as knowing wh when to hedge my bets. Whatever you choose to call it, your instincts helped us out considerably for once. Once we obtain a Fusang tree for ourselves, we can cure Miss Cell's poison, correct? Theoretically, yes. But to actually do that, you'd have to make your way into Zhanyang, where the Emperor is. And you'd have to be insane to do that, wouldn't you? Hey, we're going to face off with Kishi Wang eventually, especially now the Emperor is trying to wipe us out for being Confucians. Besides, we can't leave this last belt until we find the Tree of Emptiness and chop it down. The hidden Tree of Emptiness? Well, I suppose it all boils down to the same thing. At any rate, curing Miss Cell's poisoning remains our top priority. Can I assume our next destination to be Zhan Yang, then director? Uh, yes, of course. After all, uh, we do need to get our hands on our tentacles at all costs. As Kaldea's director, I'm personally responsible for the lives of my staff, and that includes Cell. I certainly can't afford to go around dying first. Well said, director. Well. Don't you worry, my girl. We'll find a way to save you. You just see if we don't. You hang in there and focus on defeating Kishi Wong. Miss Emily, I know we're not out of the woods yet, but at least it takes care of one big problem. Yeah. It's great to finally see Director Gordolf back to his old self again, isn't it, Senpai? Eh. Sure, why not? <laughs> I knew in the end he was going to sacrifice himself if there was actually no legitimate way for us to get an antidote. Ah, is that where people start, you know, changing their opinion on him and whatnot? The fact that he would sacrifice himself willingly? Well, not necessarily willingly, but he would sacrifice himself for us. Is that where people start changing, having a change of opinion on him? Eh, yeah, maybe. But with that, I'm going to end this episode here. So thank you so much for watching. See you guys next one, where we will be doing Sector 13, and then most likely 14, if I can get to it. If not, Sector 13 might very well be its own episode. I have no clue. But it seems we're out of, out of like long stories for a bit, I think. In which case, saves us to do 13 and 14. And then the finale will be 15 and 16. And since this one is 4, I'm assuming that 14 is either 4 again or 3. And then 15 will be either 3 or 4, and then 16 I believe is 4. Or it could be 3. Either way, there's a lot of stuff for us to do. There's not very much time left. But I'm getting there. We are almost done portrait of a demon king oh that sounds interesting oh hey we're, we haven't fought an archer in a while so yeah until then see you guys later